Hello and welcome to ATP Report. It's another Katie and Barry show with the beautiful, brilliant, and talented Katie Hopkins joining us from sunny Southern Mexico. Hi, Katie. Ah, oh, thanks for saying those nice things. And yes, it's great to be here in Mexico because the people here have to work to eat. Uh, they're still out there, out and about. Very different to lockdown Britain. I bet. Speaking of Britain, there is a massive controversy on the European continent, and it concerns a difference of opinion between the UK and the EU. There are incredible numbers of reports coming out of Europe relating to the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine causing literally brain clots, seizures, and deaths. And the EU has a different opinion than the UK. Let's start with this. What countries are involved and are upset and are now restricting use of the vaccine? Mm. Well, the list, Barry, is, I think, shocking in itself. I'm just going to read you through the ones that we know of for certain right now. Uh, Austria. Uh, and Austria, actually, we should pause on because Austria had three women under the age of 45 all have very serious and traumatic clots after having the vaccine. And one of those went on to die, two had to go to ICU. Austria was really the start point. Okay, the list of countries that have now suspended it, Austria, Estonia, Latvia, Luxembourg, Lithuania, Romania, Denmark, Norway, Iceland, Netherlands, Ireland, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Slovenia, Cyprus, Sweden have all banned the AstraZeneca vaccine. Wow, because it's causing clots in the brain and seizures in the brain. Is that correct? Yes, it's a sort of deep vein thrombrosis, which some, I don't know, mom, my mom, for example, had DVT in her little legs because of her veins. Um, so clotting in veins, but then at very serious level, clearly causing death uh, of certain individuals. And there are different stories going on, Barry. In Germany, their uh, Minister of Health has come out and said that the incidence of clotting after taking the AstraZeneca vaccine is three or four times higher than it should be, i.e. in a normal population. And that seems to be the story that, that's coming from these countries that have suspended it. However, official data, AstraZeneca, the British government are all saying, no, 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 that's nonsense. There's no more incidence of clotting than you would expect. Which one do you believe? I don't know. I mean, neither one of us are doctors, but when you have almost the entire continent of Europe and countries on the other side in the British Isles all saying no more use of the vaccine, this is not a rumor. This is not something minor. This is not something statistically, um, numerically uh, inappropriate to base a country's policy on. This is some serious stuff. It, I mean, it really is. And the other thing, Barry, I really feel we lose track of this, is we get so far down these rabbit holes, right? Oh, take the vaccine. This population is that. This population is that. This many clots and this many people. The real conversation, I think, or at some level is, were you more at risk from COVID or are you now in a worse position because you had the vaccine? What I mean is we've got a long way away from 99.7% of people could have COVID and have no serious side effects and be perfectly fine. So why do you then find yourself taking a vaccine and then having a vaccine that ends up in, in the example of Austria with you either in intensive care or losing your life when for a 45 year old woman, COVID was typically not going to have any impact on you whatsoever. I mean, it is just gut-wrenching. And it's gut-wrenching for me, Barry, that the British government is still pushing this vaccine on people as we speak. People are receiving this vaccine as others suspend it. And Boris Johnson says, oh, 
they're just being kind of childish about the fact we voted Brexit. He says it's a retaliation for Brexit. I mean, are we talking politics here or are we talking medicine and health? Which, which is it, you know, or is it crossed? Well, you know, that's a really interesting comment because I think your insight is right spot on. When you have the, well, I guess you'd call it the people's reports pouring in from country after country after country. And finally, the governments across Europe are saying immediate emergency halt to all inoculations using this formula. And then the UK is off in a field by itself saying, no, 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 it's just politics. When country after country after country after country after country, which you listed, I can't even believe the list, it's growing daily, mm -hmm. are suspending the use of this. It's not politics, they're trying to save lives, right? And, right. and if the vaccine presents a risk to the population that is worse than COVID, in other words, in the eyes of the legislatures or the ruling parties or the governments of these countries or all of the above say, you're more at risk from the vaccine than you are from getting a very bad flu, which happens to be called COVID-19. Ergo, take the risk of the vaccine away. If you get COVID, well, you have a better chance and you're not gonna get a brain tumor uh, that should be really, really disconcerting, don't you think? Absolutely, I think. And, you know, geographically speaking, if I see this from a British perspective, we have Ireland, who's just, you know, rubbing shoulders with us. It's the little island next door to us. Ireland is saying, no, we don't want it. We won't have it. So our closest neighbour, uh, you know, part of Great Britain is saying no, and yet England is still persisting. One of the things I always want to ask politicians at this kind of juncture, I'd love to be in, the, in front of them in their face, you know, and ask them, would you give it to your child? You know, and I don't mean the baby or something, that's outrageous, but I mean your 24-year-old son, your 35-year-old daughter, would you give them this vaccine? Because I really wonder about that. You know, do politicians preach this out to the people, but then protect their own? Are they making sure that their family members don't get this particular sort of vaccine because it's high risk? And why are people prepared to take these risks with their own lives? You know, do people value their, what, what did we brainwash them so completely that they lost all sense of what is good for them and what is bad? And I, I think the answer to that clearly is yes, we did. You know, people have been brainwashed and it, and it really has worked. Yeah, let me ask you a question um, that I, I ask everybody this and nobody gives me an answer that is logical, at least in my perception. Maybe such a wise woman as you will be able to answer it for me. If everybody's getting the vaccine, right? <laughs> and you believe it works and you don't want the vaccine, right? but everyone else has it. Why are people so mad at you for not getting it? In other words, right? If you get on a plane and you're the only one on the plane without the vaccine and everyone else has it, then they're immune, aren't they? Why do yeah. they want to force it on you? Why do they not want you to travel? Why do they not want you to be able to interact with businesses? Why do you have to be segregated? If a vaccine yeah. works, then it works. And if it doesn't, well, then it doesn't and don't get it. Can you explain that? Because I don't understand that concept. Right. And it's uh, it's a, it's an absolutely bonkers notion. When you start to pull back to, you know, any arguments the left have used historically for things, my body, my choice, you know, whee, 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 that then gets ripped up when it comes to this scenario, because this is something they do want you to believe in. Actually, on my plane journey uh, here to Mexico, I read this pamphlet of, of leaflets um, that someone sent to me from inside our socialized healthcare system. And it was essentially a script for how you persuade people at different ages 
that they should have the vaccine. So it was basically like a sort of a way of convincing people that don't want to have it why they should have it. And it gave horrible examples of how your grandchildren would be more proud of you if you have it than if you don't. Kind of emotive, coercive manipulation techniques for persuading people to have it. So, you know, you add that kind of scripting that's coming from inside the NHS to a vaccine with proven detrimental health uh, side effects. And suddenly this is real evil uh, that's going, you know, happening in front of our very eyes. I think you and I would both say it wouldn't be something we would be going anywhere near. But then of course people see, well, I want to be able to go on holiday. I want to be able to go to a bar or restaurant. They start to, you know, British people are already accepting there's going to be a vaccine passport. Are you going to be part of the in team that have got it or are you going to be left on the outside? That's the sort of conversations people are having, I guess. So why, if you know or can explain it to me, do I have to get it if you got it and you're immune and I can't infect you? Why do you care if I have it? I think it's this weird sense of that if you don't, you might persuade someone else they shouldn't. And then if they persuade another two people, they won't either. And then all of a sudden our system of ultimate compliance and state control will fail. And I think that's where masks have been such a good way for state, the state to be able to test can I get people to comply? And in the British example, every single time they've realized, yes, we can. We can take this from them and they'll say nothing. We can mask them and they'll say nothing. As long as we keep paying them, they'll do whatever we say. It makes me very ashamed, Barry, um, but that's certainly what's gone on. And that, that sense of coercion from your neighbors is absolutely strongly felt in the UK. Well, thanks for explaining it to me. And it's horrifying if that's the right answer because that is really scary because it's a very slippery slope to totalitarianism when that kind of logic is accepted by the majority of our citizenry. Oh, I wanted to tell you one other thing, Barry, sorry to dive in. Uh, they just, I just saw it on the news, I think, or it had been pushed out hard. A, a professional seller, sort of... Um, I would say celebrity cellist, had had his vaccine, get this for his scripted narrative, had his vaccine, he was so overwhelmed with emotion and joy at having the vaccine, out got, he got his cello and started playing a cello concerto in the room where he had his vaccine. And the media just happened to be there to film it. Yeah. <laughs> Vaccines make you play cello concertos. Okay, good, good, just normal, fine. Yeah, and that was just a coincidence that they showed up with camera crews. Oh, just, just pure chance, Barry, pure chance. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. I sure appreciate your time today, uh, and I appreciate your insight, and I hope you're wrong, but I don't think you are, um, sadly. Uh, <laughs> so thank you for Katie Hopkins today, and thank you uh, for me, Barry Nussbaum, for joining us on ATP Report.